The Jazz Mini is a beautiful and compact aluminum stand for your smartphone that even holds tablets up to 8 inches. Click now to learn more. The Tegra Note 7 is the second fruit born of NVIDIA's ongoing strategy of, well, if no one else is going to recognize the greatness of our processors, then damn it, we're just going to build the finished products ourselves then. It is the second handheld device to use NVIDIA's latest and greatest Tegra 4 system on a chip, but unlike the first device that rolled around, one that I happen to be a huge fan of, the NVIDIA Shield, this one is in a much more conventional form factor. The Tegra Note 7 is a plain Jane 7-inch tablet designed to go head-to-head -head against products like the Google Nexus 7 and iPad Mini. So first up is the specs. With a 1280x800, 16x10 aspect ratio display that unfortunately doesn't use Gorilla Glass, NVIDIA won't be winning any awards for who has the best, most retinal display, or anything like that. But personally, thanks in large part to the vibrant colors and strong viewing angles enabled by the IPS display tech in it, I find the screen and pixel density acceptable, if unexceptional, at this size. The base, and until the LTE one is available, only model weighs 320 grams, features a quad-core 1.8 gigahertz Tegra 4 processor with GeForce graphics, and comes with one gig of RAM, single stream 2.4 gigahertz wireless N and Bluetooth 4.0, and a 15 watt hour battery that delivers delivers eh, adequate but uninspiring battery life. Like Shield, the Note 7 uses a version of Android that's about as close to stock as you can get, short of buying a Nexus device, and comes with Nvidia's promise of timely support for newer versions, something that they've actually done quite well up until this time, with both Shield and Note 7 running the latest 4.4.2 as of the time we're filming this video. On the back of the unit, we find a rear-facing 5 megapixel camera, a Tegra Note logo, and the partner branding of whoever Whoever is responsible for sale and support of the device in your region. On the top we find volume control and a micro SD slot, a definite plus since the tablet itself is only available in a 16 gig configuration, and on the left side we've got a lock button, headphone jack, micro HDMI, and micro USB for charging. A position that I actually like since it keeps these connectors out of the way if you're watching a movie or playing a game in landscape mode. The right side has a base port and slot for the included stylus whenever you're not using it, and I guess that's pretty much it for the physical tour. So what did NVIDIA really do here to differentiate themselves? Well, a couple of things. First up, I love the industrial design. I wish Google had never done away with the textured back of the original Nexus 7, and I'm very pleased to see that make a return here along with a bit of the aggressive, you know, flair that NVIDIA does so well. Next up is the front-facing speakers. Having grown accustomed to an HTC One over the last year or so, I find side-mounted, or heaven forbid, rear-mounted speakers to be abominable to use, and I can't wait until that unfortunate design approach goes away entirely. Third, and this is where things get really interesting, is the stylus. NVIDIA hasn't included a premium digitizer like you might find in a Wacom tablet, albeit at a much higher price, but rather an unusual implementation that offloads touch controller processing to the low power fifth core present on all Tegra 4 SoCs. This allows this relatively low cost tablet, I mean for all the things I've said that haven't sounded that impressive throughout this video, it is a very inexpensive tablet, to ship with note taking and drawing apps that support ignoring your palms and correctly detecting the pressure you're putting on the screen with your pen without an expensive extra screen layer and a special stylus. Great features indeed. Now, with all of that out of the way though, I wasn't really sure how to review this thing. Tiger 4 is wicked fast, okay, not quite as fast as the one in Shield with its active cooling, mind you, but nothing we haven't seen before. Seven inch tablets are swell, but nothing we haven't seen before, unless our name is Luke. Luke has never extensively used a tablet, so I figured, let's do this. I handed to Luke, someone who uses a phone, notebook, and desktop as part of his daily life and recently got a shield, and see what happens. All I told him is this, use it as much as you use it and record your thoughts. If it sucks and you think it's pointless, say that. If you move a significant chunk of your computing time over to the device, then say that. So let's get his thoughts. But first, a guide on how to shave your face, sponsored by Dollar Shave Club.
<laughs> what are you doing? Um, how to shave. It's, well, it's kind of like a how to basic parody. No, no, that's not, this is, that, that's, this is disgusting. And it, you have blood on your head. Is that actually blood? Either way, you're going to have blood of others on your hands if you release this. It's actually not okay. Okay, either um, way, do your, do your proper, like, advertisement, presentment thing. Present the thing. Whoa, I can't even talk right now. Slippery. This is disgusting. I'll be back. I'll do my part. Do your part properly. We'll be okay. So, uh, yeah, Dollar Shave Club saves you time and saves you money. For less than the price of conventional shaving gear, you can join the club and have high quality razors sent directly to your door once every month. So you don't have to choose between the two terrible options of either using a dull razor or being stuck trekking out to the store to fight with a customer service representative to go get the key from the thing to unlock it so that you can overpay for blades that have useless features that you don't need, like vibrating handles. Nope, instead of gimmick gimmicks like promising to have bears shipping your package from a party warehouse, Dollar Shave Club focuses on delivering high quality bathroom supplies that like their shave butter that was featured so prominently in this video and goes on clear so you can see what you're doing while you shave and there are butt wipes for men that with the help of a mirror also go on clear and let you see what you're doing I mean, well, Dollar Shave Club doesn't include the mirror for the butt wipes. I came up with that idea myself. Anyway, the point is dollarshaveclub.com slash Linus to join the club, and now I'm going to hand off to Luke for his impressions on life with the Tegra Note 7 from NVIDIA. As Linus said, I have not used a tablet before, and when I first got my hands on this tablet, my first reaction was, this is too small and dinky. Why would I care over a phone? Spoiler alert, that wasn't necessarily the case, but I'll get into that later. The first thing that I liked on this tablet, not the main thing, but the first thing was emails. Being able to read a large portion of the email and reply to it at the same time is really nice. On my phone, I can see some of the email, but not usually a very usable amount. And I find myself hiding the keyboard a lot so that I can actually read the person's email to make sure that I'm replying very specifically to what they were saying. So it is nice sending emails on a tablet, but is buying a tablet just for emails worth it? Probably not. Um, so. Now into gaming, which I found was awesome on this tablet. Almost every single game that I could play on Android on this tablet was way better on this tablet than on my phone. I played on this tablet for quite a while and then moved back to my phone and was very annoyed at the lack of screen real estate because when you get used to having all of that room for touchscreen movements and everything else that you might run into when playing games like Raiden, being able to see that much more and being able to move around that much more on the screen is really nice compared to a phone where it's actually kind of small. I even noticed a huge improvement in this going from an S3 to a Note and going from a Note to a tablet is still a very noticeable improvement and much, much better. That being said, heavily based joystick games I have never liked on Android and being able to play those on the tablet didn't really make it that much better because it's still a touchscreen game using joysticks, which I find a terrible experience. Maybe you like it, I don't know, that's totally up to you, but personally I do not like touchscreen joysticks. So that brought the Shield up to the point. Why, why not the Shield? Why not use the Shield? The Shield is a good device, it's a great device for using different things and playing different games like, I can't remember what it was called, but Raven Shield or something like that is way better on the Shield than it is on a tablet. Way better. So if you want to play those kind of games, if you want to be able to put it into console mode and plug it into your TV, if you want to be able to do any of that kind of stuff, Awesome, great. If you want to be able to push games from your computer to the Shield and play them in bed or whatever, awesome experience, that's great. The problem I have with the Shield is it's not as well-rounded as the tablet. You're not going to want to send emails on it. It feels like you're punching your name into a game that you haven't played before for the save file and it's super frustrating because your name's really long and you have to find the words all the time using the D-pad. Or you have to hold the screen in a really weird way to be able to touch things on the screen and neither are that great experiences. So personally, I would probably go with the tablet because it's more well-rounded in my opinion. Although if you happen to be able to get both, maybe you get a shield on a discount because you bought a graphics card with it or something like that. Awesome, all-encompassing experience that you will really enjoy. All right guys, if you made it past Linus's Dollar Shave Club integration and got here, thank you for watching, thank you for sticking with us. I know that may have been a little bit hard to watch. It was a parody off of How To Basic, if you guys have seen him on YouTube or if you haven't. I'm not necessarily sure I'd recommend going and watching. It's a lot of basically what Linus just did, so if you're into that, feel free. If you're not, 
maybe avoid it like I do. Either way, if you liked this video, like it, dislike it. If you disliked it, don't forget to subscribe, as always. If you want to get a better discussion medium, go on the forum, because it's just always better over there. And if you dislike the ads on the forum, be sure to contribute. That'll get rid of all the ads. And if you want a shirt like this one here, although I don't think you can buy this one anymore, you can check out our store on District Lines and buy a shirt there. We have some really cool stuff coming up soon. I'll see you guys next time.